Adolf Hitler entered history as the man who unleashed World War II and put the world at risk of annihilation, and always will be one of most hated persons in the world history. But his personality is shrouded in myths and legends. Was he Jewish? Was he insane? Did he become a dictator because he failed as an artist? Did he fake his suicide and live long after Wutu? Today we will examine all these myths and legends and provide you with the truth. Legend 1. Hitler never finished high school verdict. True. From 1899 to 1905, the Hitler family lived in their own house in Leonding, a suburb of the Austrian city of Linz. Adolf attended primary school, known as a people's school in Austria, and did well academically. When he turned 11, he entered a secondary school. There, his academic performance was uneven, with good grades only in subjects that interested him. It seems he wasn't suited for sustained, disciplined work and could spend entire days doing nothing. After the first year of secondary school, he was held back for a second year. Later, he perceived school as an unnecessary obligation, and, after his father's death, he stopped studying altogether. His mother attempted to enroll the 14-year-old Hitler in a boarding school, but this didn't change much. In the surviving certificate, he had good grades only in drawing and physical education, while the rest were unsatisfactory. In the following years, Hitler expressed his contempt for the traditional education system in Germany, criticizing schools for filling children's minds with unnecessary information, failing to provide proper guidance for life, and stating that universities had been replaced for him by self-education and the trenches of World War I. Legend 2 Becoming a dictator due to failing as an artist. Our verdict, mostly untrue. Adolf Hitler did indeed aspire to become an artist, but his failure in that pursuit cannot be directly linked to his rise as a dictator. After finishing boarding school, Hitler spent two years doing nothing but attending theaters and the art museum in Linz, gathering the determination to go to Vienna and apply to the Academy of Fine Arts. In 1907, leaving his terminally ill mother in Linz, he went to Vienna. He attempted to join the Academy of Fine Arts twice. The first time, despite intense competition, he managed to pass the preliminary selection, but in the subsequent round, he failed. His drawings were criticized for having too few heads. He disliked drawing people. On the second attempt, he was rejected at the preliminary stage. Nevertheless, Hitler did not give up on his dream of becoming an artist. He painted watercolors from photographs and life, which his friend Reinhold Hanisch sold. For Hitler, facing rejections in art shops was unbearable. Spending his inheritance from his mother, Hitler scraped by with small earnings but had no steady job. In 1913, in order to avoid serving in the multinational Austro-Hungarian army, Hitler moved to Munich. As soon as World War I began, he volunteered for the German army. He considered Germany his true homeland and was ready to sacrifice his life for its victory. In November 1918, wounded and in a hospital, he learned about the German Revolution and the humiliating armistice that Germany was blamed for. From that moment, he became obsessed with the idea of becoming a politician to save Germany and restore its greatness. In September 1919, Hitler spoke at a meeting of the German Workers' Party and crushed the speaker who advocated Bavaria's separation from Germany and unification with Austria. The success of this speech led to his entry into the DAP leadership and eventually to a small group of like-minded individuals recognizing him as their leader. As the head of state, Hitler translated his artistic views into policies, ordering the creation of a museum of the greatest works of Aryan artists in Linz, spending hours planning the reconstruction of the German capital and approving the burning of hostile books that contradicted the ideology of National Socialism. Legend 3. His real name was not Hitler. Our verdict? Untrue. The myth that Hitler was not the Führer's real surname arose from his father, Alois. He was born in 1837 in the village of Strohns, 80 kilometers northwest of Vienna. Until the age of 40, Alois bore his mother's surname, Maria Anna Schickelgruber, as she gave birth to him out of wedlock. When Alois was five years old, Maria Anna married Miller Johann Georg Hedler and sent her son to be raised by Johann's more affluent brother, Johann Nepomuk Hedler. Variations in the spelling of the same surname were common in villages. 
The biological father of the boy cannot be definitively established. After Johann's death, he agreed to adopt Alois, but did not acknowledge paternity, insisting that his brother, supposedly confessing to this among mutual acquaintances, was the father. In the birth registration ledger, the note out of wedlock was changed to in wedlock, and a note was added in the margins. The father recorded Georg Hedler, well known to the undersigned witnesses, who was named as the child's father by Anna Schickelgruber, acknowledged himself as the father of the child Alois, and requested that his name be entered in this birth register, which is confirmed by the signatures below. In January 1877, Alois Schickelgruber became Alois Hitler, despite three crosses in place of witness signatures. His children bore this surname from birth. Legend 4. Started the brush mustache trend. Our verdict, partially true. In reality, this trend appeared in Europe much earlier. By the late 19th century, mustaches of this style were worn in Austria-Hungary, Germany, and Russia. The toothbrush mustache was considered practical, requiring less maintenance compared to large or even curly mustaches, while still emphasizing masculinity. It's more accurate to say that Hitler contributed to another wave of this trend in Germany in the early 1930s. Legend 5. Was actually Jewish our verdict? False. This legend is also tied to the uncertain origin of Alois Schickelgruber Hitler. According to one version, Maria Anna worked in the home of Jewish family Frankenberger, or Frankenreiter, in Graz, and it was during this time that she became pregnant with Alois. This version came up during the Nuremberg trials. Hans Frank, a close associate of Hitler, claimed that in 1930, Hitler asked him to investigate Alois's origin, though Frank had no evidence to support this. In his 1971 book, historian Werner Maser attempted to trace Hitler's genealogy through documents from the Waldviertel region, to which the village of Strohns belonged. Maser managed to prove that in the 19th century, there were no Jews among the residents of Graz and no people with the surname Frankenberger. Maria Anna herself came from an Austrian peasant family, and the Gidler Guttler brothers had no Jewish roots either. Legend 6 shouted Heil Hitler. All the time was insane, a Satanist and an occultist. Our verdict, untrue. The image of the deranged Führer is based on film footage where Hitler shouts unclear phrases from a podium and raises his hand. During rallies, he did indeed shout Heil, the official Nazi salute, but without his surname. Additionally, the trembling, shouting hysteric with manic eyes is portrayed in fictional movies. Witnesses do attest that in the final months of the war, Hitler did appear this way, but before that, his behavior was completely different. As for his mental state, Towards the end of the war, Hitler suffered from hypochondria, but doctors did not diagnose him with psychiatric disorders. Instead, he was a fanatic with a mad belief in the ideology of national socialism, in the sacred power of the blood of the Aryan race, and the necessity of its purification. Regarding occultism, there's no evidence that Hitler belonged to such societies. Rather, some of his associates did. Rudolf Hess and Hans Frank were part of the Munich-based Thule Society, led by Rudolf von Sebottendorf. Hess and Heinrich Himmler were interested in astrology, developed special rituals for members of the SS, and supported the Annenerbe organization. Hitler himself did not tolerate competitors in the struggle for influence, and after 1933, such societies were banned. Hitler ruthlessly cut off anyone who believed in anything other than National Socialism. Legend 7. He was also a vegetarian. Our verdict, not entirely true. Some of Hitler's contemporaries who attended his dinners recalled that he was a vegetarian. In reality, Hitler was on a specific diet due to medical reasons. Guests were always served fish and meat. It's also known that he introduced the tradition of Eintopf Sundays. On one Sunday of each month, instead of meat dishes, housewives all over Germany and even restaurant chefs prepared vegetable stew and the money saved was sent to poor Aryans. Therefore, it cannot be said that Hitler was a vegetarian due to ideological reasons. Rather, he was constrained in his dietary choices. Legend 8. He was a brilliant orator. Our verdict, true. Hitler's oratorical talent began to show when he entered politics. In the DAP, German Workers' Party, Hitler was initially responsible for propaganda, speaking at several rallies every day. His speaking abilities were evident in this context. 
In private conversations, he didn't come across as the most engaging interlocutor. Hitler had an ordinary voice, but he always spoke with emotion, carefully observing the audience's reactions. Later, he would tailor his speech's content and tone based on his audience, calm and reasoned when addressing military and industrial leaders, aggressive and forceful when speaking to the masses. Hitler developed a set of oratorical poses. As noted by one of his biographers, Joachim Fest, he inventively combined the elements of the circus and opera theater with the solemn ceremonial of church liturgical ritual. Evidence of Hitler's oratory talent lies in his speeches before crowds of thousands which were interrupted by thunderous heils. His final speech was broadcast on January 30, 1945, as the front lines were already crossing Germany. Legend 9. There were 40 attempts to assassinate him. Our verdict, not entirely true. In 1981, the well-known German writer and publisher, Wilhelm Berthold, released the book Die 42 Attentate auf Adolf Hitler, the 42 assassination attempts on Adolf Hitler, which has been reprinted more than a dozen times. However, based on declassified post-war Gestapo investigation records, there were significantly fewer such attempts. The most famous of these attempts was Operation Valkyrie on July 20, 1944. On this day, Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg and his adjutant brought a briefcase with explosives to a meeting with Hitler. They placed it next to him, with the detonator set to activate after ten minutes. The conspirators found an excuse to leave the meeting and were unaware that the briefcase had been moved. Several officers were killed, and Hitler himself was injured, temporarily deafened, burned, and wounded by shrapnel. This was a conspiracy by Wehrmacht officers who aimed to eliminate Hitler and save Germany from defeat in the war. After Hitler's death, the conspirators planned to seize power and establish a provisional government that would immediately offer Western nations terms for a ceasefire. This attempt wasn't the only one, but the exact number of attempts remains unknown. Initiators of some attempts recounted about four other cases, but there is no other confirmation of these four cases. Legend 10, he faked his suicide and lived for a long time, our verdict, false. Before his suicide, Hitler ordered his body and the body of Eva Braun, his wife, to be destroyed. According to testimony from SS Chief Hans Rattenhuber and Hitler's personal adjutant, Otto Guncha, the bodies were doused with gasoline and set on fire, though they didn't completely burn. On May 2, 1945, Soviet soldiers entered Hitler's bunker. The remains that were found were sent for forensic examination, which suggested that among them was the, presumably, Hitler's body. The jaw, which could have confirmed Hitler's identity by comparing it with dental records and other remains were placed in secret storage in the state archive, where they remain to this day. When Stalin was asked during the Potsdam conference whether Hitler's body had been found, he denied it, not wanting to admit that the remains were taken to the USSR. This denial gave rise to the myth that Hitler was still alive. This version was surrounded by incredible speculation, such as him escaping, fleeing on an airplane or submarine, living on a remote ranch in South America with Eva or a mulatto woman, surrounded by children, and quietly dying many years after his regime's collapse. However, reputable historians believe that Hitler did indeed commit suicide on April 30, 1945.